Oh, hi. <laughs> What's up? Uh, it's Dean. Welcome to the Dean Blundell Show. My name is Dean. Same thing, I just said that. Um, here at DeanBlundell.com. Dean. Dean, 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 Dean. We're going to get as many Deans in as I can. Uh, and uh, as always, uh, the podcast features new people, fun people, different people. Welcome to the show. Darren Pfeiffer. Darren Pfeiffer, ladies and gentlemen, from the rock and roll band Goldfinger, Darren Pfeiffer, and Paul Feinstein, food and travel blogger extraordinaire, Paul Feinstein, host of the Paul Cast, ladies and gentlemen, here at DeanBlundell.com. I, I liked uh, podcasting with you guys so much the last time. I wanted to do it with you again because uh, I do everything according to analytics and feel. You know what that is, guys? You know what feel and analytics are? <laughs> I know what anal is. I don't know lytics. <laughs> Is the, the Venn diagram too to, to, uh, highfalutin for this podcast? Probably. I know anal. Yeah, I know you do, buddy. I know you know anal. Anal. Analytics. The Venn, di- the Venn diagram of anal, lytics, yeah. and feel. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> I. Like a college course. I'll take the uh, anal class. So. It's like, a, then, it's like a shout out to Alex Trebek, SNL. Yeah. It's like, I will take. Analytics for 400. <laughs> RIP Alex. Uh, <laughs> What's your major in college? Anal. <laughs> Lytics. <laughs> yeah. So as I looked at the <laughs> analytics and, and and felt how how much fun it was to podcast last week, I decided to schedule one with both of you fuckings again. And, and I'm really glad I did because it's already started out well. So I appreciate it. Nice to see you guys. Uh, Darren well, Piper at, at Darren 99 on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, the dangerous Darren show on podcasts uh, everywhere you get yours, including DeanBlundell.com and Adobe. Ah, I'm glad I'm through that. How are you guys? Are, how you feel? You're both in LA. How you feeling? A little, are you decompressing? Are you feeling like, uh, you know, I haven't talked to you guys because the last time we talked, it was like right after the fucking election. It was like probably a week ago tonight, all I think. And it was on like like Trump had basically uh, was losing or had lost and was coming out saying, fuck the world. Um, how are you guys feeling? Where are we at? Go ahead, Paul. I'll let you go first. Uh, so I went through many stages of. <laughs> Elation, deflation, masturbation, re- joy, masturbation. Um, I am thrilled that 77 million people voted for Joe Biden. I am horrified that 72 million people voted for Donald Trump. I am uh, thrilled that Joe Biden is basically just telling them all to go fuck themselves. Like we're going through with this transition, whether you want to let us or not. I am depressed that the 72 million people who voted for Donald Trump believe in conspiracy theories. And that's pretty much where I am. I got a big yin and yang thing going on on a daily basis. Mm. And by the way, not healthy to watch 96 straight hours of cable television, <laughs> cable news television. I'm never doing that ever. Never, never doing that ever again. Have you been glued to that <laughs> shit? Like for the last five days, like everybody else, six days? Well, the whole thing. I was, I was until the results came on Saturday, like until, well, until the networks called the election on Saturday, it was just like, give me another 10,000 votes. Give me another 10,000 votes. And again, like we talked about last week, it's like, stop cock teasing me, Wolf Blitzer. There are no new fucking votes. <laughs> Asshole. Or oh, not enough to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. stop cock teasing me. How about, speaking of cock tease, uh, uh, just a quick stop down for a second. How about the networks bleeding the shit out of this, though, too? Like, it was like breaking news every time uh, they came back from break, and you're like, oh, maybe he's the president now. Maybe it's over. Maybe it's, maybe the fucking, the long sleep is over. Maybe we are waking up. Maybe it's like, oh, breaking news. And it was, they did breaking news every break for seven days. Seven days. Brutal. And I thought, brutal. if I was you guys, Darren, like you guys fucking hanging on by a thread down there, hoping that it's over, and you went through the roller coaster of, you know, election night where you went to bed, and you're like, the fucking guy won. <laughs> and then you wake up the next morning, progressively you get a little easier, you get a, okay, and you you know, the prognosticators are telling you what's going on, but how did you feel? Like, did you, did you, did you, are you mad? Are you happy? Are you just, are you unlike Paul where you're like, Hey, listen, I'm just fucking happy. The guy's leaving. Uh, I echo a little bit of what Paul said. Elation. uh, Oh, glad it's over. uh, For the most part, Uh, there's still these pesky little lawsuits that Trump's floating and, and filing that are being shot down like ducks in that duck, that duck game, duck hunt. Remember that Nintendo duck hunt? Yeah. Great game. I love that. At, game. at any rate, uh, I mean, yeah, 
72 for Trump and 77 plus or so in change for Biden. I'm happy Biden won. I'm, I'm happy he's president elect. But yeah, that shows you that 72 million in America said, yeah, the last four years have been just fucking great. Fantastic. Sign me up. I love this guy. Mm -hmm. That makes me sick to my stomach. And it also makes me realize that Biden's got his work cut out for him. The Biden Harris administration uh, have the work cut out for him. And it, it, it just blows my mind that half of the country, that at least half the country that voted, looks at Democrats like they're the evil ones. We're the evil ones. When we Four years ago, when Hillary lost, we conceded, right? She conceded. She mm -hmm. called, said, you know, good race, congratulations, way to go. Democrats called Trump, congratulated him in the Senate and the House. Four years later, now Biden's the president-elect, and only four Senate Republicans have co issued congratulations because they're petrified <laughs> to, to, to piss off this guy who has 69 or 68 days left in office because he holds with his 72 million uh, votes. He holds, he does hold some sway. He holds power. And so, they're petrified. So can I, can I, and that can I explain the charade that's happening? Yeah, because because so that's what? that. Yeah, please. Because what what it is what it is that and Darren brings up a fucking great point. Um, is is this this thing that he's doing now and carrying all? Because it's not what he's doing. It's not him fucking around and saying, "Hey, listen, I'm going to fucking win this." And he's still tweeting, tweeting today. I'm going to win. I'm like, fuck. It was over a week ago. You dumb cunt. So it's not it's not that stuff to me. What it is is like. As you point out, seventy-two million fucking rabid assholes, racist pricks, um, or people that for some reason seem to think he's a good human being, um, they're easily influenced by everything he fucking does. Like absolutely everything he fucking does, and that's the scary part to me. Like really scary. So sorry, go ahead, Paul. What's the charade? I'd love to know. Please let me know that. Okay, it's so the charade. charade is this: there, there are two, there are two things happening at the same time. One is. Trump is scared out of his mind because he knows that when he leaves office, it's lawsuit central and, and there's a lot of problems heading his way. Lawsuit central and, and debt central. Now, on the other side, the Republicans are actually like the guys who are actually in power, who do play 3D chess, or whatever the fuck they call it. Um, McConnell's of the world and Lindsey Graham's of the world. They know that they need to use Trump for one last thing. They know that Trump can get out the vote. And they know that there's a runoff in Georgia for the power in the Senate. And if they can stay on this train for, for just one more month, they can drive the vote up in Georgia to get their senators in and they could hold on to power. That's all this is about. They are using Donald Trump for one last thing to get his people to come out to vote for the Senate. Let me, let me add to know that. Joe's won. Let me add to that. You're absolutely correct. They're hoping and praying that he will lose some of that power, some of that influence and political equity in Georgia to get people to vote Republican, which, by the way, they didn't. They lo Republicans lost that state uh, to, to, to Biden. I think it was like 15,000 or 20,000, but it yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Like 14 or 15,000. There's no guarantee that, Bi that Trump's going to do the right thing and help his Republican buddies in Georgia. Yeah. Number two, I'm hearing reports that Michelle Obama might come out of hiding. She didn't really show her face at all for the last month or two of the election. She didn't need to, her, her husband was. But she should come out in Georgia and sort of campaign a little bit for Ossoff and, and, and the other guy, I can't remember his name, uh, the Warnock. other Democrat. But she Warnock. should go out Warnock. Warnock, yeah. Warnock. She should go out there and help, help these, two, these two guys, you know, to try to pad that Democratic lead that we have, at least right now in that state. Mm -hmm. And then we can swing the power and Mitch McConnell will lose his uh, majority and all will be right with the world. But are you guys not like fucking a little bit? Happen. I know it's a charade, and I get it. And I and 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 prognosticating is one thing. You're very well educated, both of you guys, so I appreciate it. And, and and everything that I've watched on on CBC, CTV, everything I've read on in AP is the exact same thing. It's it's a charade. They're trying to hold out so they can get Georgia because Mitch McConnell shitting his fucking pants because he's not going to be the. Uh, the, the Senate leader anymore. He's not going to be the House Majority leader. Senate leader. So that's the fucking problem. That that and 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 I, and I get that. But the, but are, she, are you guys not like <laughs> like to, to me? It's it, it looks cheap and fucking hilarious that Trump's not allowing Joe Biden to access his president elect email. To me, it's cheap and fucking funny 
that Trump's not allowing the transition team any transition funds, and he's not allowing Joe Biden, who will be the next president of the United States, just because he's being a dick. And I fucking love it a little bit, and I also fucking hate it. But it does not scare you, like, because it's a great fucking power move. No, he can't have anything. <laughs> he can't. No, he can't have his email. No, no, I'm not giving him money for that. No, no, fuck that. I'm still, the, I'm still the guy. But are you not scared? I'm a little yeah, scared. Because I'll tell you why. Because this is really dangerous time when the administration should be talking to each other and sharing information. Letting it's, it should be an, an easy transition, but it's not becoming an easy transition. It's right. becoming a nightmare. Biden doesn't have access to security briefings, daily security briefings, which leaves the country vulnerable. Because apparently Trump show, apparently according to his public. Uh, schedule has shown no interest in doing his job yeah that's the other thing the like he's not like someone someone asked him the other day like does he plan on doing anything for the next 65 days he's like nothing zero he's not doing jack shit yeah it's kind of like the the last hour on on the edge when i was working at the edge before you came in yeah. but from four to five i was like 102.1 the edge shit 17 degrees this is nevada <laughs> <laughs> that was it <laughs> Just I didn't mail it in. Oh, no, 2.1, <laughs> the edge. That's Nirvana. But, but like, I, would you not do the same? Like Trump. Oh, no, two by one, the edge. I just, I just got a blowjob. One oh two point one, the edge. I just got a blowjob in the back. Oh, I mean, is the mic on? There's Nirvana. <laughs> uh, yeah. As soon as he shows no interest in doing his job, and um, the dangerous part is, the, it, it leaves our, it leaves our country open, you know, for for attack. Maybe maybe not by boots on the ground, but cyber attacks. I read a fucking and, great know, story just, today about this this someone saying, "Hey, listen, if you don't think he's that much of a cocksucker to sell like secret information to Russians and shit like that after he leaves the office, he probably already has." That's the thing. Like the dude's probably already sold a bunch of information to the Russians to promise to cover his debt when he leaves. And speaking of debt, you know what fucking made me laugh? Do you see these emails? I'm on the Trump email list. I should have fucking brought it and put it up. The Trump email list where I got an email yesterday from Trump and it was hilarious. It's like, you're really letting us down, Dean. <laughs> you haven't donated $2,000. You got to fundraise for him. You, you haven't. Got to, you need to, you got to yeah. pay those legal, yeah, got to pay those legal bills. Yeah, dude. He's like, you haven't sent us two grand. And if you're not going to send us two grand, then maybe you should think about sending us five grand. If you're not going to send us five grand, send us 10 grand. And then here at the bottom, read this small print. The small print was like, if you send us two grand, we're keeping it. If you send us five grand, we're keeping half of it and then putting the other half to something else. And if you send us 10 grand, you're fucked. We're not telling you anything about where that money goes. And, I'm yes. and then there's a PSS. There's a PSS. PSS. 50 bucks will be fine. Yeah. yeah. We'll take fiveies. We'll take fiveies. Send us your change. So... So can I so so can I answer that same question? Yes. Um, I am honestly, I think what he's doing is unconscionable, and what I mean by that is since good the word. day of the since the day of the election, he hasn't once made a single comment about coronavirus. Yeah, where in the United States we now have over one hundred and forty thousand cases a day and in, in rising. And it's going to get up to 200,000 cases a day. And the deaths are going to start following in uh, and start skyrocketing. And the guy hasn't said a fucking word. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything that to me is unconscionable, it's that. And that he is, he is not caring about being the president and protecting the country in any way, shape, or form. And, it, and the fact that that doesn't turn off these 72 million people and they just want to believe the conspiracy theories, it... It, that's the most deflating thing of all to me. Yeah. It's like and by these contrast, people are lost. Well, by contrast, the very first thing Biden did was start a, uh, uh, a COVID-19 coalition, started to hire some really super hyper-educated folks, doctors to lead this, to, to hire even more people to make sure that to change. And uh, Trump's not letting any information flow to the Biden camp. So he doesn't know what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done, what's being taken care of. So let's chuck that off the list. When they go into office on the 20th or 21st, they're starting ice cold, mm -hmm. ice cold. Yeah. So they got to like make phone calls and, oh yeah, that's taken care of. Okay, shit, we didn't know that. Should have known that two months ago, but yeah, we're cool. Like we're going to not hit the ground running with the COVID uh, thing. So I think Americans that voted for Trump should go, wait a minute, I wanted my guy to win, but he didn't win. It seems like he didn't win. It seems like it, it's pointing towards a Biden presidency, which I didn't like. But I'm, an, I'm a smart fella. And I'm a smart gal. Maybe we should give him what he needs to help with this COVID situation, to help with the economy, to help with the environment. The list goes on and on. But he's not. He's being a cocksucking baby piece of shit. 
and I'd love to just choke him the fucking life out of him. I, I'm getting I'm getting heated up, Trump. Or, uh, <laughs> no, I listen. I feel the up. I feel the well, same I'm way. Talking, I'll use it. I feel the same way. I I don't understand how. I don't understand how more people aren't off. aren't talking about yeah, it. Yeah, he does have a tiny mushroom. Yeah, I don't understand how more people are talking about it. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the, this is the fucking plague. This is the worst fucking health crisis in the history of 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 our planet, effectively outside the fucking bubonic plague and the Spanish flu. Like that's a hundred years. That's a hundred and two years between pandemics. This is the worst. One point two million people globally are dead that we know of. Probably another fifteen million in China because they lie their dicks off. So there's that. And then on top of it, you got ten and a half million people in the United States at a hundred and fifty-two thousand cases today, and they don't care. That's the fucking yeah, part that that, that that I, I don't uh, I don't understand. I can't fucking from up here in Canada. And I, I'm talking to you down there, and I know how bad things are up here, and I've got a fucking completely different... I don't understand the mind of a fucking human being or any human beings that don't give a fuck about the pandemic. That is mind-blowing to me. Another sad thing about this, guys, is is that of that 72, Paul, you mentioned 72 million people that voted for Trump. Out of those 72 million people that voted for Trump, what Trump's doing with being a baby and not giving information to Biden or giving funding, et cetera, et cetera. About, I'd say about half of those 72 million are probably like, good, fuck Biden, fuck him, fuck him. Maybe more. Uh, fuck that guy. Trump's doing the right thing. Fuck him. He can go fuck himself. Give him, we're, we're giving him shit. He, can, he gets going to shit. Fuck him. <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah, die. Fuck All those people will die. Yeah. Everyone else is going to die. And you know what? Like, okay. I'm going to die. Go ahead. Go ahead, Darren. The other half are like, yeah, maybe we should do the right thing. Yeah, you can see we lost clearly. Uh, maybe Trump should do the right thing and give some information to Biden and his camp and let him move some stuff into the offices and you know give him some funding to to, to do the right thing. Not just you know, it's a right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But you know, as we've seen for the last four years, Trump doesn't do anything correctly. Zero. Well, it's actually, not. It's it's just that really he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything for anybody else other than himself. And actually, giving the keys to the kingdom to Joe Biden for the transition would be doing something for the American people. And fuck that. He hasn't done anything for you guys ever. Fuck. He's not going to start now. And that's and again, yeah. seventy-two and million way, people we, doing like, oh fuck. That by sounds the way, good. By the way, before we start sucking our own dicks on how great this turnout was in the election, uh -huh. 80 million eligible voters still didn't fucking vote. So, like, we're so pathetic on the voting side. And it's like, oh, wow, we got 20 million more people voted this year. Great. 80 million fuckers didn't vote. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah, you think care. if you're depressed yeah. by that, you should come up to Canada. Like, the, the government here is decided by 30% of the population on a regular basis. <laughs> Really? Is that yeah, the low? voter app. Jesus well, not Christ. that low, but you know what I mean. It's like it's it's sick. Forty, fifty percent, if that, uh, of this country. What is it, Sean? What do you got there? Forty percent, thirty percent, forty-five, forty-five. Am I? Yeah, forty-five, fifty, fifty percent, forty-five, fifty. I don't know. Yeah, You're holding up like a four to five. That's all I know. People. What's that? What's that? What'd you say? You know, and the sad thing is, Paul, there's only like six million people in Canada. Yeah. Like in the whole country. <laughs> yeah. Easier to get away from fucking people wild. here. It's the fucking best. But I'll, I'll tell you something. And, and, and I don't know if you guys are at this point with COVID yet. Paul Feinstein at Mr. Paul Feinstein on Twitter. Darren Pfeiffer at Darren99 on Twitter. That's where you'll find him. Paul, the host of the uh, podcast at DeanBlundell.com, the food and travel podcast. And Darren, the host of the Dangerous Darren podcast at Dean Blundell, IDLB Radio. Also, all these podcasts, wherever you get your fine podcasts. I am to the point now with COVID where I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> uh, and let me explain that. It's not like I don't give a fuck about the disease or, or the virus or the transmission rates. I care greatly about those things. What I don't give a fuck about anymore is anyone else. And here's why, because I have sat and watched What's happened in the United States, to a lesser extent, even though it's a fucking apocalyptic, like people down there don't care. So I'm not going to force them to care. I'm not going to make them care. I, you're not going to make them care. There isn't a tweet you or Darren could send, Paul, that's going to make anybody go, you know what, Darren, fuck, probably about time I should wear a mask. Fuck this Jesus stuff. It's not going to happen. 
And and when it comes to the fight that's happening up here in Canada, I can only speak for Ontario because this is where I live. It is nuclear across the country up here for uh, prorated according to what we have to deal with. 1,533 cases today in Ontario alone. 18 deaths. That's a lot for us. And <clears throat> still, all I see around these tweets about how many people have died, who's sick, and how bad it is, restaurant owners fucking telling people to screw off because they need to stay open. Uh, gyms yelling at fucking, uh, like owners of gyms, yoga studios, you know, fuck the government, we should be allowed to stay open. Um, individual businesses that are affected, and I get it, the restaurant industry is in the shits. I totally understand it. And, and it's not something I can do, and I'm not going to be able to address it today. But I am to the point now where I am just going to wear my fucking mask go to the fucking store, get my fucking groceries, come home and not give two fucks about what anybody else does. Don't care. I don't care if people go around licking each other anymore. I don't care if the fucking, I don't care if there's an ACDC show and everybody shows up with a, with no mask and they go fuck the world and they all die in 11 to 14 days during the intubation period. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. And you know, and here's the thing, and I'm of this opinion, because I used to think this about fucking gang members and shit. Listen, all the people that have illegal guns, throw them in the fucking Roger Center, let them shoot it out over the weekend, and we'll see who's left standing on Sunday morning. That's how I felt about gangs and guns. This is how I feel about COVID and the arguments around COVID and the bullshit that people keep coming up with. You can go fuck yourself with your anti-mask stance. You can go fuck yourself with the go fuck yourself or don't wear the mask stand. You can take your fucking, it's I'm not taking the vaccine, anti-vax, I am a vac. Take all of it. You can take all of it and you can take it and you can put it in a little fucking cylinder. You can ram it up your ass because I don't care anymore. I really don't give a fuck. What I care about now is keeping my kids and my family safe and giving people the information about what COVID-19 is and here are your numbers fucking go outside and have a rodeo with each other. Go get in a fucking 12 man pup tent and take your clothes off and hork all over each other. I don't care anymore. What I care about is D1 what down, I can everyone. control. D1 Thank down. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Try the meatloaf. Try the meatloaf. Am I wrong? Where's a song, you know? Am I wrong? <laughs> I don't care about Does your fucking Doesn't give a fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. Doesn't give a fuck. Don't wear a mask. He doesn't care. Go to the store. Go to the store. Don't wear a mask. Doesn't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. Um, Dean, the Thank only you. reason that you are wrong is that you're also kind of like accepting that it's going to fuck your life up for the very long foreseeable future. No, I don't. Um, I know it's going to be that, gone in like four months. I know that I'm going to go get my vaccine. Is it? I'm going to mind my own fucking what? business. Yeah. Is it? Well, not, it's going to be gone for me. I'm going to go mitigate my my fucking efforts, and I'm going to go get my, my vaccine when they come out. 90%, gone, 80%, 75%. Don't I don't give – no, I, I still care about, like, keeping myself healthy – and I know this is a temporary thing. I know it's not going to last forever. Like, I get that fucking part. Great hat, by the way. <laughs> but I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to yell at people anymore. I'm not going to ex extol the virtues of doing the right thing anymore because I don't give a fuck. It'll, when it's over, uh, whoever's dead is going to be dead because they did something dumb and I'm still going to be alive, God willing, because I took the right necessary precautions and I took it seriously. But why bother fucking tell anybody anymore? Why? What's the point? So Dean, so Dean, I like what we were talking about earlier that you want to be an alt moderate. So you got the you got yeah. the crazies on the alt right <laughs> with their conspiracy theories and the anti semitism and yeah. the racism and the general anti science. The generous alt left, which is by the way also anti fucking science. Yes, when they think it's like everything's got to be holistic and all this bullshit ayahuasca garbage. Um, <laughs> yeah, fuck them all. I kind of agree with you on that. On that. On that. Everybody on that should have a name uh, that that looks like a that right. looks like a letter that's backwards, and and there is no sex, and there is no <laughs> no one has a period, but everybody has a period. That's the group I don't want to be in. That's that's like I those are those are all groups I don't like. The Proud Boys today. Did you read about the Proud Boys? Let me read you something. The founder of the Proud Boys is a guy named uh, Kevin Chapman. Oh, I fuck. mean the worst, but the best. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm fucking alt moderate. That's what I am. I'm alt middle. I'm gonna be <laughs> like the violent version of the of the of the middle where everybody's like, "What's what's up with that guy? He wants everybody to like each other." Yeah, but does he have to beat us up? He didn't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you could be like militantly violent about caring about science it would be amazing <laughs> you will read this fucking book can we be you will you will take your fucking math class yeah you will fucking do your physics homework you cocksucker uh so here listen this is a proud boy Ch kyle chapman founder uh sent out a message to supporters this is from uh, deanblundell.com by the way you can go there and read this uh, sent out a message to supporters. He no longer wanted, Darren, you'll love this, to pretend he wasn't a white nationalist. <laughs> Due to recent failure of Proud Boys chairman Enrique Terrio, who's uh, of color, um, he says, Due to the uh, recent failure of Enrico Terrio to conduct himself with honor and courage on the battlefield, it has uh, been I that have decided to take over. I, Kyle Chapman, We'll resume my post as the president of Proud Boys, effective immediately. He says, quote, we will no longer cuck to the left by token Negroes as our leaders. <laughs> we will no longer allow homosexuals or other undesirables into our ranks. We will confront Zionist criminals who wish to destroy our civilization. Uh, he said uh, he made it clear he believes the defending of Western civilization. You know, all that. Oh, all we're doing is defending the, the way of the West. He said, yeah, that was a load of shit. I'm basically a complete fucking Nazi and I'm doing, I'm going all white all night. And I laughed my dick <laughs> off. I'm like, you know, part of me respects it. <laughs> like finally, he's not lying also, like, to everybody. Part of me's like, okay, good. Like you just fucking sick. If you just said that in the first place, uh, you wouldn't have had as many friends. And here's the thing. I didn't know they were, Colored homosexuals in the Proud Boys. Like, how fucking confused do you have to be Jesus to be Christ, a, a, a oh homosexual of color and a fucking rabid member of the Proud Boys? By the way, who was confused that, that, that these guys were Nazis all along? I wasn't confused. I knew they were Nazis all along. They didn't, it wasn't that well hidden. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm happy with Dean's uh, newfound stance of fuck it and fuck everyone. Yeah. This is great, Dean, by the way. Thanks, buddy. Fantastic. It warms my heart. As a friend of yours, it warms my heart. Appreciate because it. Because ultimately, you are in the side that's going to be safe. You and your family and loved ones are going to be safe with yep. COVID if you do the right thing. Wear the mask, stay, social distance, try not to go out as much as possible. Well, these other idiots are going to not wear masks. They're going to anti vax. They're going to go to the beach. They're kill their go to parents. Work. Kill their grandparents. They're going to go here, go there. They're going to, they're going to kiss and hug and fuck and lick each other. And they're going to get COVID and die. And those people, I'm sorry to say, are in a, uh, a, a group of the farm, a group of the pen that's called stupid. Yeah. They're the stupid cows. And, th and they bump into rocks and eat each other's faces. And the basket of deplorables, perhaps? Stupid cows. Over here are the smart cows that are like, hey, we're cows. We're pretty smart. Let's, let's figure this shit out. Let's, yeah, let's, not, let's wear masks. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the dumb cows can die you gotta all day. You got to take the hat off. And I don't you gotta, care. You got to take so the hat off. So when this is, so I put my uh, Bison's hat back on. I can stop so laughing this is at your over, fucking sombrero. Sorry, sorry. So when this is over, Dean, yeah, on, let's say April, May, June, whatever it ends, when we can finally put it behind us, there'll be a lot of dead, dumb people, and yeah. that is a very, very good thing. That's a great point. A very good thing. You know, and, and very I'm, good thing. And, and you know how the smart people get smarter. Yeah. And 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 I I think that's a great point. Do you know how um in the this alt middle that I'd like to create? I should say more smart, isn't it? More smart. Yeah. No, smarter is not more a word. Smart. More smart. Smarter is a word, isn't it? Smarter is not a word. word. Yeah, smart smarter is a word. word. Yeah, fuck, of course. Smarter it is. is a word. It depends on how you use it, though. Like, well, I'm smarter. I'm smarter than that guy. That's how you yeah. say that. No, smarter's smarter always been guy. a fucking word. That it's not a depends so on So smarties, they're delicious. Okay, good. Um, anyway, the the middle is is a wonder you're right, and that's why I want to be there. Like I, I read stories like this fucking clown on the right, and I'm embarrassed for to be a white guy. Like I'm like, fuck you. Like you, uh, it's almost like these are skin tags on the body of civilization. Alt right and alt left. Do you know what I mean? And I know we shit around about it and we yeah. talk about it, but like wouldn't it be great if we could just like slice those skin tags off 
Wouldn't it be awesome if we could just fucking excise that part of society permanently or just those ways of thinking, the extreme ways of thinking where it's so extreme, it's oppressive to anybody else who doesn't believe what they fucking believe. That, that would be incredible. Like if we could just, if we could make it like, uh, like the other day I was thinking about hate speech because a lot of this came from Facebook. A lot of this came from social media groups, band together, act like assholes, like the Trump boat stuff, which made me laugh. Fuck. It still makes me laugh. All those boats that sank. Um, and all these people that seem to get together. I, and I was, I thought to myself, you know, I wonder if, they, yeah, like uh, I was hoping for a couple of drownings in there. Nothing major. <laughs> Nothing major. A couple and, drownings. Yeah. I, and I was like, that's the part of the old middle that I like is that it's okay when you're all middle, like the most of the middle doesn't want, you know, death to happen to anybody. Alt middle's pretty cool with it. Sometimes it really is variant on who the person is and what they re represent. A racist dies, a virulent racist who, who makes people feel like shit about themselves. Am I going to celebrate it? Chances are yes. And someone go, oh, that racist had a family. I don't give a fuck if that racist had a family. Like, you don't see anybody going, what about Hitler's fan friends and family? Like, how do they get to feel? And again, I go back to that thing. And that was the other part of this whole fucking, yeah. being alt-middle, I watched this whole, all this shit happening with Donald Trump. And then I, I watched him have COVID. He lived. I was upset. Someone's like, how can you want a guy to die? I'm like, alt-middle. <laughs> um, I was hoping for at least one of these assholes in the white house to just kick it like Corey lewandowski got it today like can we just get one of these assholes to just like drop off like can we get a stephen miller to drop off a lewandowski to drop he already off? had it stephen just miller already had it he made it one. he made it stephen miller's alive it's a shame Again. these guys have access to world-class doctors and world-class treatments and world-class special medicines right. and Mm -hmm. that are still being developed. Right. We won't see for months and months and months. Yeah. Um, did you guys uh, did you also, uh, I know we talked about him a couple weeks ago, Jeffrey Tubin. Uh, did you guys uh, see Jeffrey Tubin has been fired from the New Yorker after 27 years? Got fired. Uh, yeah. As a professional writer, Paul, is that he weird? Out, he went out gracefully. <laughs> yeah. Is it weird? Is it weird? Like it's weird what he did. Well, I want to get I, what I want to get to is you're right, Darren, the masturbating on a Zoom call. Like you're a part of many Zoom calls. You're a writer by trade. You're a writer for Photos Magazine, at Mr. Paul Feinstein, one of the greatest food and travel writers on the planet. Um, have you uh, been on uh, meeting like Zoom meetings where there's like lots of people before? Um, I've been on many, many, many Zoom meetings with lots and lots of people. I shiver at the idea that one of these people would be masturbating underneath, but uh, you know, show your hands, everyone. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> nope. Every, no. meeting? Every meeting. Um, it's, I just, uh, one hand. That's a, so, well, here's the other question. How many yeah. times do you think Tubin's done that? In a oh, if he right? got, if he got caught like this. Yeah. Cause he yeah. got, cause he and got like, loose. It wasn't just like a one and done. Right. Yeah. I mean, he was clearly, he was doing some stuff, right? Well, he was loose about the whole thing, right? Like, yeah, it's like, he, a, it's like a shoplifter that gets caught shoplifting. Yeah. He, he shoplifted before. He just got caught. <laughs> he shoplifted that dick a few times. But the story was, and it, and it made me laugh, the story was he, he took it another call. So he's on this call with the New Yorker magazine. And and there's like 32 other people on this Zoom call. I don't even know how the fuck, I don't do screen big enough for that. I couldn't imagine doing that. Anyway, so it's in the morning. He might have had a, a he's, According to this thing, he uh, had a tryst the night before, probably still had a little Viagra in him, uh, gets a phone call. Maybe maybe someone sent him a beat picture, something for the spank deposit. You know what I mean? Like maybe it was just a nice bum shot or a nice side boob of somebody he was with. And apparently what he did, like he was doing the whole thing pantsless to begin with. He just had a shirt on and he kind of just pushed his chair to the side and started jerking off and while he was looking at his phone. And thought he was out of the camera. So he, he, he said this, he sent this tweet out today after he got fired. And you're right. He actually was fucking, cause it would be horrifying. Like you're a Harvard law trained professor emeritus, one of the greatest legal minds of our time. You're a noted scholar and a backbone of legal society. And this is how you go out jerking off on a zoom call. It's gotta be, but, he, but he was like, Hey, listen guys, I was fired today by the New Yorker after 27 years as a staff writer. I'll always love the magazine. I'll miss my colleagues. 
and I'll look forward to read, reading their work. I mean, that's that's yeah. nice for what a guy that say? got fired for jerking off in a meeting, isn't it? I guess they well, told him to be under, they told him to beat it. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a he took a the new new meaning for beat writer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> what's the over under on when he's allowed back into civil society? I don't know. I don't know. He's a fucking awesome. Well, I think the Viagra wears off after four days or three days. I don't know. I've never tried it. Uh, I don't. I've never, never tried. tried it. I think he'll be no, back. He'll I'm, be back in two years. Well, how long was Brian Williams out for? Uh, two years. Uh, he's two on years. MSNBC now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but like, he, like he, all he did was lie about a helicopter attack, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all he did. All he did was lie about a helicopter attack. He did jerk off on a fucking Zoom call. I, no. I, I just can't. No. I I don't know. I I think about I think about him, and anybody that's ever made a mistake. And 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 this is the kind of mistake where it's like it's not like it's a big deal, because it's just a terrible fucking judgment like call. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's it, it. Really is. It's like of all the things you could have decided to get distracted by in a work call. Masturbating's a big one. Like there's there's a lot of work. How boring consumer. was that fucking how boring was that fucking meeting? That was fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, it probably I mean, happened though, all joking aside. There probably was like two or three girls on the call that were on the screen that looked really hot and it got them all fired up. Yeah. Oh, that was hot in the No, and it's there. not what happened. I just told you what happened. He got like an email from some chick and she sent a picture of her stuff and he's like, I gotta jerk off. I've never, ever, ever had to jerk oh, off. What, is that what happened? Yeah, I've never had to jerk off that fast. Oh. But I think that explains guys that whack off on the subway and I stuff. Have. Have. <laughs> I have, Dean. I think have I told you the story. No, I haven't. Have you really? What yeah. Darren, where are you on where Darren? Where are you on the Where are you on the Kinsey scale exactly? Fuck bottom. On the Kinsey scale, like bottom, as far as kinky. Bottom left. Well, probably an eight <laughs> or a nine. Um, yeah, I worked at Starbucks at the Beverly Connection, which is now gone. Oh, no. That's good. Starbucks. <laughs> no, I did oh, many times, and uh, all these supermodels would come in, and they were like smoking hot, and it's like I'm filled with like 15 shots of espresso, and I'm jacked up already, and and these models would come in, and they were like devastating, like just stupid hot, and they're so friendly, and they smell good, and I'd take a break, I'd go in the bathroom, and, and uh, rub one out real quick, because I'm I'm all yeah, yeah, you're a guy, you're so fucking yeah, yeah. hot. And I just gotta go. I was twenty. You can't. You can't make that. 20, to, you can't make that. That a, a, a like a later thing. You can't look at a really pretty girl. Like a spank bank. Yeah, oh, you can't. Spank bank. You can't put it in a girl, spank bank. Make the withdrawal later. You know what I mean? Like put the money in for a rainy day. Like when you get home in your bathroom. Or spank bank. We call it a spank bank. We call it a jack shack. Like you put the image in your jack shack. Yeah. And then you go in your jack shack later and pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> No, it had to go. It had to happen right away. It's like, like if I so much as touched it, I was, was going to explode. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't in there long. Ten seconds, bang, you're done. Before they had cameras in the bathroom, maybe they did. Maybe there's footage of you. Yeah, they're probably. <laughs> I'd love to see it. I got Darren, you, you can. Darren, don't ever run for office. Here's a great story, really quick, that ties into the camera and the internet and, and jacking off. Yeah, I I had a, a girl <laughs> like me on Skype. Just this, this, Dean, you're going to laugh. You're going to love this. Okay, okay. She liked me on Skype, and she's like, hey, and I, uh, hey, nice to meet you. And she was like a pretty girl, like, and, and I'm like, and I know the scam. You know, look, check out my link. Click on this hype, this link, whatever. And I'm like, look, I'm not going to click on anything. She's like, no, 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 I'm just like new to Skype, and I'm just poking around, and I saw you look, you're a band, he looks like you're in music, and, you know, I want to become friends. So for a while, for two or three days, it was really benign. It was like just conversations about music and touring and culture and food and we didn't talk about sex at all. She didn't, nothing like that. And and then one day out of the blue, she's like, are you alone? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to have some fun? And I go, here it is. You want me to click on some link? You want me to check out your photos and spend whatever? She's like, no, 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 no. I just, you just seem like a really nice guy. And I'm coming up there in the summer and maybe we can, I'll see you. She's uh, from Venezuela or something. And uh, I go, okay, let's have some fun. So are you not we, fucking, she showed it. me your boobs. I t- stop it. Stop it. Stop it. How long ago is this? Oh shit! Like 2015. Oh, okay. So long time. Oh, wow. uh, uh, 
Not that long ago, but a long enough time. Yeah, before ago. my marriage. Okay, so before my wife. And you. So she she hits you up. She says you're cute. She's like, I want to send her some, shirt. Yeah. Tell me what you want me to do. Are you not I'm questioning it? Like, are you not a little skeptical at, at, at all about this? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. No, I'm not, because I'm waiting for her to send me a link, and I'm like, there's the link. I want to click on the link, uh, and then it escalates <laughs> to like it, it's getting hotter and hotter. Now she now she's fully naked and she's masturbating. I'm telling her what to do and she's doing it. And I'm like, this is crazy. This is super hot. And then again, it, she goes away. A couple days later, she's like, hey, let's have some more fun. And I'm like, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm trusting her because she's not asking me for shit. And she wants me to masturbate. She's like, Darren, I want to yeah. see you masturbate. Little red light goes on. I'll masturbate and then you masturbate. It'll be hot. I'm like, okay, will we? So I'm I'm on camera like. Fucking yeah. giving it, right? <laughs> giving it. I know how it works. Man. She goes, I know how it works. So she, so she jams herself, yeah. and she she gets off, and she's like, "Oh my god, I came so hard. That was hot. How are you, are you busy tomorrow? Let's do it again tomorrow." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm I'm free tomorrow." <laughs> so I'm driving around LA, <laughs> and I'm on. What am I I'm going over Laurel Canyon, Paul? Okay. Okay. Go going on. over Laurel Canyon. She's like, "Bling!" And I'm at a light, and, and I'm like, she's like, "Are you alone?" I'm like, uh, "No." I'm, uh, oh, yeah, I'm in my car. And she's like, oh, okay. And she sends me the video of me jacking off. She, she screenshot it or screen recorded it. And she's and then now her language goes into big, bold letters. I need $1,000. Uh, or I'm going to your mom, Marsha, and your sister, Heidi, and your employer, which I worked for a merch company, my buddy owned. I'm going to send it to your employer, a Kill the Eight merch company. I'm going to send it to this person, that person, this person. And I, I pulled over. I found a pull. I pulled over off a of Laurel. And I'm like, listen, you fucking bitch. Do your fucking worst. I don't have a wife. I don't have a girlfriend. And my mom and my sister know I'm a perverted piece of shit. And my guy, <laughs> and, and Kill the Eight, is my best. The guy who owns Kill the Eight, my boss, is my best friend. So do your fucking set. I'm not giving you a nickel, you fucking bit cunt. And she goes, I will do it right now. I'll send it to Heidi, your sister, and your Marsha's your mother. I'm like, and I said, my mom's number is 716-542. <laughs> and I was like, oh, here's my sister's phone number in Atlanta. Here's her email address. Do your fucking work. I'll do it right now. And I'm like, do it. Quit fucking talking shit. So the whole time we're battling, I'm on with um, Skype customer service. Yeah. And I tell them what's going on. And they're like, okay. Okay, yeah, uh, we, we see your screenshot, we see, we see hers, we see the argument. We're going to shut her down uh, immediately. This is not cool. You're in the right, Mr. Pfeiffer, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, listen, bitch, I got to go because I'm late for where I was going to because of you. But uh, do your fucking worst and you're being shut down. She's like, I'm not being shut. <laughs> she got shut down. <laughs> so here's the thing. If you do this to like 10 guys, 20 guys, 30 guys, I bet you one or two are like, don't tell my wife. I'll give you whatever you want. $500, yeah. 1000 more. Done. I bet the hit, the hit rate's way higher than... Venmo. Than it's got yeah, please don't send that video of me jacking off. Dude, that is the way to do it, though. I had a buddy do the same thing, and he followed up with the cops, and then he told her, listen, fucking send it to everybody on my Facebook page. I don't give a shit. And it's, she did. The woman sent it to everybody on his face, all of his Facebook contents, his mom, his sister, his wife. See, girl, He's got three kids. And the this great, girl didn't do it. Well, this, oh, she didn't do it? She couldn't do it. She did. I, called, I called my sister Heidi. I told her what happened. Yeah. We're like birds with a feather. Yeah. I was like, hey, I, I got caught jerking off with some girl on Skype. And she tried to extort me with some money. Did she send you a video? Because I gave her your email address. And she's like, why would you give her my email address? But meeting meeting that shit head on and saying, you know what? Like I call it the Yarmir Yager. Do you remember when Yarmir Yager did that about six or seven years ago where he slept with a teammate's girlfriend? Girl. And the girl's like, I took a picture of you and me sleeping together and I'm going to send it out to every... I'm going to hit send on my Instagram account, picture of you and me sleeping in the same bed if you don't give me $10,000 cash. He grabbed the phone, hit send for her, turned over and went to fucking sleep. I laughed my dick off yeah. because that's how you deal with that stuff. You, you just say, hey, here's the truth. This is exactly what happened. And I've got nothing to hide. And the great part is you've lived your life so out loud, your mom and sister know that you're completely fucked. So if they got a picture or video of you jerking off, they'd be like, hey, did you hear from Darren today? Yeah, I did. Man, he's crazy. Anyway, we're getting together for Christmas, right? Like, that's probably how serious something <laughs> yeah, like that yeah. is in your house. Was a video of Darren jerking off. Well, who has like a very, <laughs> It's a very powerful position to be in. Like, not caring about fucking anything is great. Well, I've shown my family videos that I've taken on the road, and I have a collection. Yeah. 
Okay. And, and my brothers, yeah, like, hey, Brian, Kevin, check this out. <laughs> and they're like, that's incredible. How did you get all that? I'm like, well, when you're in a band, you know. Yeah, you're in a big rock yeah, band. You can do whatever you want. Uh, things, things out. So, some things sometimes happen. So nothing, your so, yeah. mom, did your mom ever anyway, find we got out? Distracted. Did your mom ever find out? Never, I never told my mom. Never no. told my mom. Told my sister and my brothers. My mom's in the dark. So someday this video might surface. <laughs> Would you even give a fuck if it did? No. That's, That's why I mean. told her to do her worst. I said, do your worst. Can you imagine being like that, Paul? Can you imagine thing. being at a point in your life where you're like, uh, someone can, can catfish you into jerking off and you can go, yeah, send it out. <laughs> do your best. I don't give a fuck. I'm proud of that. It's honestly, I'm jealous of that place. That's a beautiful place to be. It's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful place. That's like a, you're like you become the most honest person in the world. You're like, all right. Do you never have anxiety? So we got beautiful. Yeah. Do you never me? have stress? Yeah. Do you never like I, that? To me, a guy like you, that someone that can do that, isn't afraid of jack shit. You can fucking do anything to him. If I had a wife, or oh, I would have been panicking. Yeah. Yeah. If if I had a wife, a girlfriend, no, because you just break up with her and she'll come back. But if you have a you have a wife, that's a whole that's another kettle of fish. Yeah, you know, that's a that's yeah, a lot. Like Batubin had a wife, he's got kids. Like that that's a whole different program. Yeah, that's no, true. I didn't have I didn't have nine. I, I was free as a bird. I, I was like that's why I was like, woohoo, do your worst, bitch. Yeah, send it. Don't you, give a fuck. You could have uh, you could have actually um you could have actually made some fucking coin on that by sending it to Pornhub. By the way, you should actually see if you can get it back. <laughs> I should find her. Yeah, that, hey. is that like self revenge porn? Yeah. Remember me? <laughs> hey, you know that Here's video? A picture of my dicks. You know that video you threatened me with? For uh, reference, <laughs> can you mind sending that over? Because I wouldn't mind popping that on on, on tube eight. I, I I really wouldn't or Pornhub. Because I looked furious that day. I think I you created that. a new. I think you created a new category. It's yeah. called, I think you created a new category called self revenge porn. Um, Blackmail. Anyways, yes. Blackmail. Anyways, I, you you got to go. Anyways, I got to go. Okay. You take um, off. Love you. Great conversation. Great laugh. Uh, my hat is off for the alt middle. Okay, alt middle. Darren, you're into the alt middle too. All right, good. Alt middle is great. All kinds of fucked up shit. <laughs> you know that by now, my friend. I know you are. That's I'm why I fucking love you. Dirty, dirty. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the podcast. That is Darren Pfeiffer at Darren ninety nine on Twitter. The Dangerous Darren Podcast, Adobe Radio, wherever you get your fine podcasts. Thanks, buddy, Paul Feinstein. At Mr. Paul Feinstein, Twitter, Instagram as well. One of the greatest fucking travel writers on the planet. Uh, you can also check out his podcast. It's called the Paulcast, Food and Travel Paulcast. Uh, Good one tomorrow, by the way. Good one tomorrow. I got Phil. I got Phil Rosenthal on from somebody call somebody uh, feed Phil. Are you Netflix. serious? Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, I fucking love that show. Yeah. Oh no way. That's incredible. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm gonna watch that. I'm fucking all into those weird kitschy like. Uh, like uh, kitchen shows now, cooking kitchen shows, and and you know what? It's all I see. Like I have a, I have a feeling we need to start one. We're in the fucking pandemic. Like no one's going yeah, anywhere we, for the next three months. We might as well start a fucking cooking show, because it's all I see are crazy, <laughs> stupid cooking shows. So we might as well start one. Okay. Cooking with Dean edible. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks guys, appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Darren Pfeiffer, Paul thanks, Feinstein Darren. on the Dean Blundell show here at deanblundell.com and twitch.tv slash TV. You can also find us uh, Facebook Live, Periscope, Twitter at it's Dean Blundell as well. Just go to deanblundell.com. That's uh, where all of our stuff is. Thanks to our friends at Blue Microphones, the official microphone of deanblundell.com and the deanblundell.com network. Uh, right now, they're the lead sponsor in the Show Us Your Pod contest. And uh, all you got to do to send us your podcast is go to deanblundell.com, click on the link. You just put a little thing in there. It's like, oh, this is my podcast. It's just a link to your podcast. And then we go and listen to it, and then we get to you. You just got to fill out your information. You can win all new gear courtesy of uh, Blue Microphones, at Blue Microphones on Twitter. Go and look at their website tonight, too. Because if you're like a tech guy or if you like microphones or you're into this kind of stuff, it's like crack. It's awesome. Uh, oh, Blue Microphones. Thank you. Blue. Thank you. Uh, Ed's Fine Imports. Ed's Fine Imports.com. Buy three pairs of Gitch. Get one for free. Uh, use promo code Gitch3 at your checkout. Go shop the entire collection of Gitch. Uh, branded underwear. They've got this little pouch in the front, and they're delicious. Uh, I don't eat them when I say delicious. Like, you know. You know, sexy, kind of. They're sexy. They're delicious. <laughs>
Uh, anyway, if you use the promo code Get Tree, you'll be able to get yourself uh, four pairs of underwear for the price of three. Ed's Fine Imports.com. Owner's Box Fantasy Sports. Do you want a free hundred dollars? Of course you do. Do you like playing fantasy? Yeah. Uh, you're gonna need to. Uh, go to Owner's Box Fantasy Sports right now, and if you sign up, they'll give you a hundred dollar match deposit. Hundred dollar bonus. One hundred bucks. You put in a hundred, they'll give you a hundred. You put in fifty, they'll give you fifty. You put in twenty five, they'll give you twenty five. They've got bonus bucks. They want to bonus cash you a hundred dollars when you actually sign up. So go and do it. You can follow like two weeks, four weeks, sixteen weeks. It's all self contained. It's the greatest user experience on the planet when it comes to fantasy. It's completely self contained. Uh, so go to Owner's Box Fantasy Sports by going to ownersbox.com right now, or go to deanblundell.com for more information. There's Drew Brees right at the top. His beautiful face. You click on his link and then you sign up and then you can play a million fantasy games. I got crushed last week. I said that last week. I legitimately got hammered, but I'm still in my four man, so I'm good. That's going to be done this week, though. I'm going to get just slaughtered, probably. Still fucking fun. Got to do it. $100 uh, right now that we'll give you as a bonus if you sign up at uh, ownersbox.com. Is that it? You good, Sean? You all right? I'm all right, too. That's it for me. Have a great day, everybody. See ya.